It was the wedding of my best friend's sister, a lavish event held in a small town outside the city. As a part of the close-knit circle of friends who practically grew up together, it was only natural that I'd be there for every moment of the festivities, from setting up decorations to cheering during the wedding rituals. My friend's family had always treated me like their own, and for a while, it felt like this wedding was as much mine as it was theirs. But there was one tradition that caught me off guard. On the morning of the main ceremony, my friend pulled me aside with an unusual request. With a grin that hinted at his mischievous nature, he said, Jacob, there's something special I want you to do. You see, it's tradition here for the closest friends to dress like the women in the family as a sign of support for the bride. It's just for fun, and everyone will join in. I laughed, thinking he was joking. But when I saw the seriousness in his eyes, and the family members smiling knowingly, I realized they really meant it. They handed me a stunningly colorful outfit, a long, flowing skirt with delicate embroidery, a matching top, and a dupata, all in soft, vibrant colors. My friend's sisters were already busy helping the others with their outfits, transforming us into part of the bridal crew, in a way I hadn't expected. My first instinct was to say no, feeling my cheeks flush. The idea of wearing a dress, especially around so many people I knew, seemed embarrassing. But as I looked around, seeing everyone's excited faces, my hesitation faded. Maybe, just this once, I could let go and join in the tradition. After all, it was only for a night, and it was my friend's sister's special day. With a deep breath, I agreed, laughing nervously as my friend's sister led me to a small room where she had set up a dressing station. She and her cousins started with the dress, helping me into the skirt, carefully wrapping the dupatta over my shoulder, adjusting everything to make sure it looked just right. The fabric felt unfamiliar against my skin, but it was soft, light, and surprisingly comfortable. I noticed how the colors and patterns gave a sense of elegance and warmth. Wait till you see yourself, one of the girls laughed as she picked up a brush. Before I knew it, they were giving me a full makeover, carefully applying makeup, styling my hair, and adding jewelry that sparkled under the light. Earrings, bangles, even a small necklace, it was like I had stepped into a completely different world. They worked with such precision, transforming me bit by bit until I barely recognized myself. Finally, they stepped back to reveal the result. I looked into the mirror, astonished at the transformation. A version of me i never seen stared back, a softer, more delicate face framed by subtle makeup and colorful clothing. For a moment, I was speechless. I felt strangely beautiful, and seeing myself this way made me feel a rush of emotions I hadn't expected. Stepping out of the room, I felt nervous as the guests turned to look at me. But instead of the laughter or teasing I feared, I was met with smiles, kind nods, and the occasional compliment. Some of the aunties even told me how lovely I looked, which only made me blush more. My friend's mother, with a warm smile, told me, You fit right in, Jacob. Or should I say Jacqueline? The laughter that followed was filled with joy and acceptance. As the night went on, I started to feel more at ease in my transformed look. The dress felt less like a costume and more like a part of the celebration. I walked around with a newfound grace, holding my head high as the girls showed me how to move elegantly, keeping the dupatta draped just so. The jewelry tinkled softly as I walked, and the bangles clinked with each gesture, adding a musical quality to my movements that felt oddly enchanting. Dancing was another adventure. The girls pulled me onto the dance floor, and I quickly found myself laughing, twirling, and moving in ways I never had before. The skirt flared out as I spun, creating a flowing sensation that made the dance feel almost magical. For the first time, I wasn't just watching or participating in the wedding, I was part of its beauty, part of the joy and energy that filled the air. Even when I went to get food, guests would offer to help, carrying plates for me, offering to get drinks, treating me with a gentle courtesy I'd never experienced before. It was as if this new look brought out a side of people I'd never seen, a chivalrous care that was both surprising and humbling. My friend, meanwhile, kept grinning every time he saw me, clearly pleased with his little prank that had turned into something far more memorable. As the night wore on, I found myself having deep conversations with some of the women, talking about everything from the bride's journey to wedding traditions to life itself. For the first time, I could see a different perspective, a closeness that felt both strange and comforting. 
I never thought that something as simple as changing my appearance could bring me closer to understanding them, but there I was, learning in ways I never imagined. At the end of the night, as I looked in the mirror one last time, I felt a bittersweet pang. I knew I'd be Jacob again soon, back to my usual self, but a part of me felt like Jacqueline would stay with me forever. That experience, of stepping into someone else's shoes, feeling both vulnerable and empowered, and being embraced by a family who treated me with love and acceptance, was something I'd carry with me always. As I changed back into my usual clothes, I looked at myself with new eyes, feeling like I'd gained something profound. It was just one night, a single event, but it taught me the power of embracing different parts of myself and the magic of experiencing life from a new perspective. As I returned to my regular clothes, a strange sense of loss crept in, something I hadn't expected. My usual jeans and t-shirt felt oddly plain and unfamiliar after the vibrant elegance of the outfit I'd worn all evening. Though I was back to being in Jacob, the night had unlocked a side of me I had never known, a side that felt free, curious, and comfortable in a way I hadn't felt before. After I stepped out of the dressing room, the laughter and joy of the wedding reception continued around me, but I was changed. My friend's sister, the bride, caught my eye from across the room and gave me a knowing smile, a look of gratitude and something else, maybe respect? There was a deep warmth in that smile, a kind of acceptance that felt like it went beyond words. As the reception started to wind down, I felt a tug on my arm. One of my friend's aunts had approached me. She had watched me throughout the evening, and her gaze was kind yet deeply perceptive. You know, she said softly, it takes a lot of courage to embrace something unfamiliar, even if it's just for a night. Her words struck a chord, as if she understood something about my experience without me having to explain it. I nodded, a little taken aback, but grateful. I didn't expect it to feel this, impactful, I replied, struggling to find the right words. She chuckled gently, patting my arm. That's because sometimes, stepping out of yourself lets you see the world differently. It's a gift. Keep it close. As she walked away, her words stayed with me. The evening had, in a strange way, become a transformative experience. Wearing that dress, feeling the warmth of those around me, seeing people's kind and supportive smiles, it was more than just an outfit or a joke. It was an invitation to see another side of myself and to experience life through a lens of empathy and connection. Driving home later that night, I found myself reflecting on moments from the evening. I replayed every small, surprising thing, the gentle chivalry of my friend's father when he handed me a drink, the way strangers complimented my a Jacqueline look with genuine smiles, the depth of the conversations I'd had with the women there. It had been more than just fun and games, it was like stepping into another world, one that had left a lasting mark on me. In the days that followed, I noticed how the experience subtly changed my outlook. I started paying more attention to the people around me, understanding that everyone, in their own way, might be carrying something they don't always show. The night of the wedding had softened something in me, bringing an unexpected empathy, a sense of openness that I hadn't felt before. It also made me think about the idea of identity, how fluid and multifaceted it could be. That night, by embodying Jacqueline, I'd learned that who we are isn't fixed, but something we can explore, adapt, and expand. Each of us carries within us countless facets, just waiting to be discovered. And sometimes, stepping into something unfamiliar is the very thing that helps us understand and appreciate those hidden parts of ourselves. Whenever I ran into my friend's family after that, his sisters and cousins would tease me about Jacqueline, with warmth and laughter, reminiscing about how I'd unexpectedly charmed the guests. And each time, I'd laugh along, grateful for their acceptance and for the way they'd embraced me that night. In time, I came to see that evening not as a one-off prank, but as a pivotal moment, a night when I not only helped celebrate a friend's family but had also unlocked a new level of self-awareness. It was as if, for a brief moment, I had glimpsed an alternate version of myself, and that experience had left an imprint on my heart. The memory of, Jacqueline, stayed with me. In a strange, beautiful way, she became a reminder that life is full of possibilities and that sometimes, the most transformative moments come when we least expect them. In the weeks that followed the wedding, the experience of becoming a Jacqueline continued to linger in unexpected ways. I found myself reflecting on little moments from the evening, replaying them with a mixture of nostalgia and wonder. 
I'd gone into that night as Jacob, my usual self, never imagining that a simple outfit and a bit of makeup would shift something so fundamental within me. When I visited my friend and his family again, they greeted me with warm smiles, his sisters teasingly calling me Jacqueline and reminding me of how much I'd have fit right in at the wedding. They laughed about how I had blended seamlessly into the celebrations, dancing and chatting, effortlessly charming their relatives and even some of the family friends. Each time they brought it up, I felt a mixture of embarrassment and pride, surprised at how naturally I'd adapted to that role. One afternoon, I sat with my friend's mother, who had become like a second mom to me over the years. She had always been kind and supportive, someone who offered wisdom in the quietest of ways. As we sipped tea, she brought up the wedding, her eyes twinkling. You know, Jacob, she began, when you became a Jacqueline that night, I saw a different side of you, a softer, more open part. It was beautiful to see. Her words struck a chord, deeper than I expected. I nodded slowly, unsure of how to respond, but feeling a warmth in my chest. There's something freeing about stepping outside of yourself, she continued. Sometimes, we lock ourselves into who we think we're supposed to be. But when you allow yourself to explore other parts of who you are, you realize how vast you truly are. I thought about her words long after I left her house. She was right. For so long, I'd kept myself within the boundaries of what felt normal or acceptable, never realizing that there could be more to me than I'd allowed myself to explore. That night as Jacqueline had shown me that identity wasn't fixed, but rather a canvas on which I could paint any version of myself I wanted. In the days that followed, I felt a subtle shift in how I saw others, too. I became more attuned to the nuances in people's expressions, the small ways they might be holding back or expressing hidden parts of themselves. There was a quiet empathy in me now, an understanding that everyone had layers and complexities that went beyond the surface. One evening, as I was getting ready to go out with friends, I found myself looking in the mirror a little differently. My reflection was familiar, but now I saw more than just the Jacob I'd always known. There was a part of me that now held Jacqueline, a reminder of that softness, openness, and courage. And for the first time, I felt that the two sides, Jacob and Jacqueline, weren't separate at all. They were just two facets of who I was, existing together, waiting to be expressed in different ways. A few months after the wedding, I was invited to another family gathering. This time, it was a festival celebration, full of colors, laughter, and music. When I arrived, my friend's sisters teased me again, handing me a small scarf and joking that Jacqueline should make an appearance. I laughed, but a part of me felt a quiet thrill at the idea. And so, with a playful smile, I draped the scarf over my shoulder, stepping once more into that softer, more open part of myself. The family greeted Jacqueline like an old friend, and for the rest of the evening, I moved through the celebration with a lightness I hadn't known before. I was Jacob, yes, but I was also something more, a blend of who I'd always been and who I was becoming. As the night drew to a close, I looked around at my friend's family, their laughter and warmth filling the room. I realized how grateful I was for that night at the wedding, for the chance to step outside my comfort zone, and for the kindness of a family who embraced me for every side of who I was. Jacqueline had taught me that life is full of unexpected transformations, moments when we can step into new versions of ourselves and embrace them fully. And as I walked home that night, I knew that I would carry her with me always, a gentle reminder that we are more than what we appear, and that sometimes, it's the smallest changes that open us up to the greatest parts of who we are. As time passed, I felt the impact of Jacqueline showing up in my daily life in subtle yet profound ways. I noticed how my confidence had changed, becoming more grounded and secure. The experience at the wedding had done more than give me a good story to laugh about with friends, it had shown me parts of myself that felt natural, even if they were unexpected. Jacqueline had brought out a gentleness and empathy in me that felt like they had always been there, just waiting to be noticed. Eventually, even my closest friends started commenting on it. You're different these days, Jacob, my best friend pointed out one evening as we hung out. Not in a bad way. Just, softer, somehow. It's cool. His comment brought a smile to my face, as if he'd recognized the change I felt but couldn't quite describe. With time, my openness about the experience began to inspire deeper conversations. People seemed to share more, opening up in ways they hadn't before. 
I started realizing that the change wasn't just about how I felt, but how others felt around me, too. They felt understood, accepted, and it became a kind of silent understanding, a bridge to something deeper. One evening, my friend's sister, who had initially suggested the Jacqueline transformation for fun, invited me out for coffee. I agreed, thinking it would just be a casual catch-up. But as we sat down, she seemed more serious than usual, a glimmer of something she wanted to say in her eyes. Jacob, she started slowly, I don't know if I ever properly thanked you for going along with everything that night. You really helped make the wedding memorable for my family, especially for me. Hey, it was nothing, I laughed, brushing it off. Honestly, it ended up meaning a lot more to me than I ever expected. Her face softened. I know it did. I could see it in you. It was like, you embraced this part of yourself that night, and it was beautiful to watch. She went on to tell me how, over the years, she had struggled with parts of her own identity, sometimes feeling limited by people's expectations. Seeing me embrace Jacqueline with such openness had inspired her, giving her the courage to be more honest about herself, too. Her words humbled me, filling me with a sense of purpose I hadn't expected. The transformation hadn't just been an isolated experience for me, it had a ripple effect, inspiring those around me to explore their own hidden sides. In a way, Jacqueline had become a symbol of acceptance and openness, not just for me, but for those who had shared in the experience. As life went on, I carried the memory of Jacqueline with a quiet pride. Sometimes, when I faced challenging situations or moments where I felt self-conscious or uncertain, I'd remind myself of that night, the courage, the openness, the acceptance. And every time, it gave me the strength to step forward, to embrace life with that same sense of adventure and authenticity. Years later, I found myself at another wedding, this time as the best man for my friend. As we gathered for photos, his family, many of whom had been there that night, gave me knowing smiles. One of his aunts, who had been there for Jacqueline's debut, came over and patted my shoulder. You've grown into such a wonderful man, Jacob, she said with warmth. But I'll always remember that night with a Jacqueline. She taught us all something special. Her words filled me with a deep, unexpected gratitude. That one night, meant to be a light-hearted joke, had turned into something so much greater, a reminder that transformation isn't just about changing how you look, but about embracing who you are. I realized then that the experience of Jacqueline had been a gift, something I could carry forward into every part of my life. It was a reminder that identity is a journey, a mosaic of all the moments that shape us, big and small. And sometimes, the smallest steps out of our comfort zone can reveal the most beautiful parts of ourselves. As the evening wound down, I found myself looking back with gratitude for that unexpected night, for the laughter and acceptance, and for the ways it had forever transformed the man I would become.